That blue shell hit me so hard. That's what she said. So kids, let me teach you a little something about asbestos. Asbestos? No, she means best host. No, I said asbestos. Asbestos? By Edwin Rolfe. <laughs> Knowing, as John did, nothing of the way men act when men are roused from lethargy, and having nothing, as John had, to say to those he saw were starving just as he starved. John was like a workhorse. Day by day he saw his sweat cement the granite tower, the edifice his bone had built, to stay listless as ever, older every hour. John's deathbed is a curious affair. The posts are made of bone, the spring of nerves, the mattress, bleeding flesh. Infinite air, compressed from dizzy altitudes, now serves his skull face as a pillow. Overhead, a vulture leers in solemn mockery, knowing what John had never known. That dead workers are dead long before they cease to be. Using the Wendler approach, the meaning can be discerned as focusing on John, a man with asbestos poisoning, who performs monotonous day-to-day -day tasks without knowledge of his condition. The vulture flying over him acts as an omniscient observer and a seeker of potential death. For antecedent scenarios, John and many other men work in a factory with asbestos within the buildings and perform menial tasks. They live bland lives. The poem is divided into four stanzas with six sentences in total, and the breaks in sentences keep the rhyme scheme throughout. The climax of the poem shines light on the reality of their morbid situation. In the last sentence, while the previous lines build up to it in a dark hindsight-esque way, it ends up almost ironic. Regarding the other parts of the poem, there are no changes in person. John's monotonous life tasks shift to his ironic death and mockery of it. The emotional skeleton of the poem begins with a plain, bland life scenario and transfers into a dark, morbid scenario of his deathbed. For games, the poet plays with the skeleton. The beginning begins with plain aspects of John's life described through similes such as John was like a workhorse and repetition. John has a narrow view of the world and he's very oblivious to his morbid condition. The end of the poem focuses on death and despair using imagery such as his skull face and a vulture leering in solemn mockery. It uses a metaphor throughout the poem, symbolism, especially when talking about the vulture and how it travels over him in solemn mockery and dramatic ir irony, seeing as John himself does not realize the awful situation that he's in with asbestos poisoning. Language becomes more descriptive as it progresses and diction points towards repetitive, hard, physical, and constant labor. An agent of the poem is the narrator speaking and discussing John's bland actions and ultimate death, and it serves to highlight the vulture's role as an agent in mocking John's life. The roads not ventured into could be John writing this in his own perspective, in the perspective of death, or in the perspective of the luring vulture. It can also be written in the past tense instead of the present tense, and an addition of detail with one more stanza could be added 
to express more of the awful situation and the poisoning that John is experiencing. Regarding genre, form, and rhyme, the poem seems to take place in the 1920s at a poor factory with awful conditions and deals with scenarios of death, reality, decay, and asbestos itself. The act of John's death not only shifted the tone of the outlook on the life he lived, but it also opened him up and exposed him emotionally to the reality of his mundane lifestyle and physically with a description of bone and flesh. The grim and disgusting parts of the air incorporate into his corpse figuratively. This is how imagination is expressed throughout the poem asbestos.